Acne, a millennial struggle for clear skin. Acne is by far the most common dermatological disease of our time. We tend to think that this skin rash is purely a scourge of our time. It seems to us that in the old days, people were unlikely to suffer from acne. After all, we do not see bumps in the cheeks of ancient sculptures or people with red spots in the paintings of Renaissance artists. Nevertheless, acne is a long-standing problem of mankind, which at different times was treated in quite different ways. In ancient Egypt, acne was believed to be a punishment for lying. As soon as a person told a lie, the gods immediately punished him or her with a red rash on face. It's just not known how the ancient Egyptians treated the rash that appeared on the faces of the pharaohs. After all, the pharaohs were for them both gods and heroes, and the personification of honesty itself. Somehow, the Egyptians managed to turn a blind eye to the fact that their rulers were ordinary people, and they weren't perfect either. Take at least the pharaoh of ancient Egypt from the 18th dynasty of the new kingdom Tutankhamun, who ruled in 1332 to 1323 BC. Studies have shown that the pharaoh was 167 centimeters tall. Throughout his life, Tutankhamun suffered from numerous illnesses, including malaria, leg swelling, and epilepsy. He was thin. His skull and chest were enlarged due to probable hormone imbalances in the body. Scientists suggest that health problems were caused by incest because pharaohs from the 18th dynasty were often married to each other. 19-year-old Tutankhamun also suffered from acne. However, he had his own way of dealing with this problem. He regularly rubbed his face with patchouli oil. The leaves of this shrub were dried and affected with vapor to extract oil that looked like a viscous mustard green liquid. Patchouli oil had a delicate aroma, and its properties only improved during storage. The oil had a bactericidal, antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, and healing effect. Due to its properties, it has a positive effect on skin conditions. Therefore, it is not surprising that Tutankhamun really loved it and used it regularly. When the young pharaoh wounded his leg in the hunting field, the injury turned out to be quite serious. Historians believe that this was the main cause of his death. The mummified body of Tutankhamun was placed in a tomb inside the pyramid, and several jugs of patchouli oil were placed next to it, perhaps in order to keep Tutankhamun's skin attractive in the afterlife and to prevent manifestations of acne to overshadow his meeting with the gods. The ancient Greeks were no less concerned with good looks, and they also knew about the positive properties of patchouli oil. But besides this, they used other means, such as honey. Even then, they discovered that honey has a positive effect on skin health, smoothing it and removing possible inflammation. True, the views of different ancient Greek doctors on the treatment of acne diverged. For example, the personal physician of Emperor Theodosius I the Great in the 4th century believed that in order to get rid of acne, it is necessary to wipe the face every night with a clean cloth, while looking at the starry sky. It is not known whether the emperor of the great Roman Empire himself did this, but the Roman historian Sextus Aurelius Victor described Theodosius' appearance as follows. Theodosius, as far as it can be seen from ancient descriptions and images, was similar in physique and character to Trajan, the Roman emperor who lived 200 years before Theodosius. The same tall stature, the same figure and lush hair, and the same face, Theodosius was meek, merciful, sociable. He believed that he differed from other people only in his clothes and was sympathetic to everyone, especially to good people. If, in ancient times, people with acne were treated with understanding and tried to find ways to get rid of this disease, then in the Middle Ages the situation changed dramatically. And first of all, it was connected with the spread of Hansen's disease, leprosy. Unlike acne, this disease was caused by a mycobacterium called Hansen's bacillus. One of the first symptoms of leprosy was skin damage when it became covered in red spots. After that, the disease progressed rapidly. The appearance of red spots was followed by numbness and soreness in the arms and legs. Secondary infections often resulted in tissue loss, causing the fingers and toes to shorten and deform as the cartilage was reabsorbed into the body. 
in a third of all cases, nerve damage occurred, leading to a loss of muscle function and paralysis, as well as further deformities of the joints. Since the 11th century, leprosy has become the main infectious scourge of medieval Europe. Things remained like that until the plague outbreak in the middle of the 14th century. Not surprisingly, people were wary of any red spots that appeared on the body, including acne. Every person who suffered from this relatively harmless skin disease risked ending up in a leper colony, along with people with leprosy. Leprosaria were medical institutions in which those who suffered from leprosy were kept. These patients were isolated from society and even from medical and nursing staff. People with acne who ended up in the leper colony did not just find themselves in complete social isolation. They were also doomed to direct contact with someone who spread leprosy. That is, their chances of getting leprosy, for which at that time there was no cure, were too high. The first known leper colony was St. Nicholas's Hospital at Harbledon in Kent, England. It was founded in 1084. The Hospital of St. Nicholas, together with most other similar institutions, was located within the boundaries of the monasteries. Such isolation helped to prevent the spread of the disease. In 1226, the number of leper colonies in France was about 2,000, and at the beginning of the 18th century, the number of leper colonies in all of Europe exceeded 19,000. Besides, in the Middle Ages in Europe, a special ritual of burial of living people suffering from leprosy started. A council gathered, which consisted of doctors, clergymen, and individual lepers. Representatives of the council studied the patient's condition and determined whether they really had leprosy. If they agreed that it was really leprosy, the lepers passed into dead status. A symbolic funeral ceremony was performed over them following their complete isolation from people. The patients received special leper clothing, completely hiding both their faces and bodies, as well as a rattle or a bell to warn people of their approach in advance with loud sounds. So far as most doctors at the time did not yet have necessary experience or knowledge, and the priests and the lepers themselves had nothing to do with medicine, practically any person whose red rashes on the body seemed suspicious to them could be transferred to the status of a dead man, including a person suffering from acne. Another disease that at that time could be confused with harmless acne out of ignorance was smallpox. Caused by a highly developed viral infection, it was characterized by profuse rashes on the face and body. Its first symptoms could well be confused with manifestations of acne. Fortunately, smallpox patients were not subjected to severe persecution as lepers but this disease tried to be treated energetically. It's actually safe for the most part. Healers could perform several magical rituals on the sick. At that time, it was believed that lucky charms and conjurations could cure diseases. One of the ways to cure smallpox was to wrap the sick person in red cloth. It was believed that the red color could lure smallpox out of the body. At the same time, the above-mentioned red rashes on the face were the only way to determine smallpox in the early stages. Nevertheless, time passed. Such terrible diseases as leprosy and smallpox gradually receded, and the influence of the church noticeably weakened. Finally, the world began to think about the origin and treatment of acne. Today's doctors are well aware that acne is a chronic skin disease that develops as a result of the plugging of the hair follicles of the skin. This plugging results from four abnormal processes, increased sebum production, excessive deposition of the protein keratin, colonization of the follicle by cutobacterium acnes, and local release of pro-inflammatory chemicals in the skin. To be continued in the next episode. Stay tuned.